Hey guys, today we're talking about some of my favorite fashion brands, some that I think you really need to know about. Some of you definitely already do, and some of you may not, so I just really want to talk about them because I really just want to highlight, show you more of what I love about them and why, so let's just jump right in. Welcome back guys, so happy to have you. If you're new, hi, I'm Maytel, and I really hope you stick around and subscribe because it's a really fun place to be. We have a lot of fun together and it's free. So, you know, being that I live in Canada, it's interesting that some of my favorite designers make pretty much only like resort wear, like my number one pick. Pat Bow is a fashion house from Brazil very very like resort wear but like in a very fashionable way it's weird like i don't know can you call resort wear high fashion you know when we think of high fashion we think of very like cutting edge runway looks now a lot of these pieces are not cutting edge runway but they still are very very like they do have that high fashion sensibility because it is like very very luxurious beautiful resort wear in a very high fashion way. So I love Pat Bow and I've been loving Pat Bow ever since I discovered the brand. When I bought my first Pat Bow outfit, I had absolutely no idea who this designer was. I just like bought it because I thought it was absolutely beautiful. The price point was, you know, not that crazy. I mean, not low, but not like, you know, in the thousands and thousands of dollars, like some of the very high end, high fashion, ready to wear pieces. So again, like we're talking about like resort wear. So you're not gonna get like a blouse for $3,000, but it is kind of like more seasonal fashion. It's not like the latest trend of what's happening in fashion. They kind of like do their own thing. And that's why I love brands like this, like Pat Bow. It's just like absolutely stunning pieces that are very consistent and recognizable like to the brand, right? Like they do a lot of cutouts, which happen to be trending right now, but I think that's just their aesthetic and their vibe. Like I think Pat Bow will always do cutouts. I think they'll always do like a big wide open back. Like my favorite, I love all the floral prints, all the like banana leaf prints and like just very, very tropical, very vacation. And it's funny because, you know, like I said, I live in Toronto, it's winter for a big part of the year, but I love my resort where like I'm wearing Zimmerman right now. Like my favorite designers are the designers that make mainly spring, summer, resort, cruise collection, stuff like that. I love something feminine, billowy, gorgeous blouses, long maxi dresses, short dresses, wide leg pants, like flowy, easy to wear, casual looks that still look very, very fashionable. Just so much of a mood and very, very much a mood for me. So. I, I just gotta give it to Pat Bow, a brand that I'm loving and definitely wanna talk about with you guys. Similar to Pat Bow, very resorty. I wanna talk about Joanna Ortiz. Very, very different, but equally beautiful and amazing. So I love Joanna Ortiz because it's just like extremely, extremely classy, beautiful, and high fashion looking. Like Joanna Ortiz actually does get into a bit of a higher price point and you know, I, like I said, Papo is not exactly cheap. It's not like entry level, but Joanna Ortiz does get into like the higher price points. Once again, a lot of florals, but you know, everyone's doing florals in a different way. The way Joanna Ortiz does a floor length floral maxi, it almost looks like a gown. So that's what I love about Ortiz. It almost looks like a gown, but it's very wearable. Like you can wear it day to day, but just looks just supremely like chic, you know, like chic and effortless. First of all, I love a maxi. You throw on and you go. And Joanna Ortiz does a lot of those just gorgeous, flowy, like tiered, um, layered, flowy dresses. A lot of two pieces, one shoulders, beautiful tops as well. Gorgeous fabrics, silhouettes, shapes, like just really covering all the bases, especially for femininity, which like I just so, so into and here for. I should be living somewhere a lot more tropical because like I just gravitate so much to these kinds of brands. Um, I really wanted to talk about Joanna Ortiz because I feel like she's not really like so mainstream. Um, it, actually, most of the brands I'm talking about today aren't really mainstream, but I feel like she is gaining popularity, but there's still a lot of people that haven't discovered her and she just really does have such a chic, beautiful, very fashionable, but easy to wear aesthetic about the brand. And I love that she did a collab with H&M. I got a couple pieces from that collab and I gotta tell you, like you could not tell that they were H&M. I mean, maybe you could because it was for H&M, so if you knew the collection, you'd know. But just in terms of the silhouettes 
and the fabric and the shape, the tiers. That collab was just like very, very Joanna Ortiz. It wasn't like cheap and down for H&M. And I think that a lot of my subscribers will really understand why I love Joanna Ortiz. All right, number three, Dion Lee, which I discovered by actually just buying a piece that I really, really liked. Dion Lee is not a name that you hear a lot, but a lot of fashionistas know about Dion Lee. Just like a very, very cool, edgy brand that I love. I showed you a piece at the end of last year that I purchased. I just love the corsets. I love the edginess. Just like a very, very unique fashion line. Things you don't see from a lot of other designers and things you don't see imitated by like, you know, fast fashion retailers. That's what I really love about Dion Lee. It really truly is unique. You know, you can find a corset anywhere, but you cannot find a Dion Lee corset anywhere. Very, very distinctive to the brand and very just cool, edgy, sexy, but fashionable. Not too crazy where you're like losing that fashion. You know, sometimes when clothes get too racy and too revealing, it loses that fashion. Dion Lee, just like sexy, very sexy actually, but still very, very fashionable. It's a lot of like edgy fashion, just in terms of like, not garters, but kind of looks like gartery, like suspendery, almost like fashion fetishism, which is by the way, trending. I mean, I talked about this on TikTok and Instagram, the fashion harness, the garters, the belts, the like all those things that are just very in line with fashion fetishism. Like it's not a crazy, crazy fad where everyone's like buying these harnesses, but uh, it definitely is trending, especially amongst the fashion crowd. And Dion Lee is really just kind of one of the forefront designers in that space, in that like fashion fetishism space. However, not just fashion fetishism. I can't, I can't keep saying that. <laughs> um, but just like a very edgy, edgy aesthetic to the brand, um, but also some like just very cool, easy pieces to wear that are still fashionable and not, not basic at all, you know? Number four, we're taking a bit of a sharp left here. And like really, if we started at Pat Bow and Ortiz, like this is just, we're really taking a sharp left. But let's talk Raph Simmons, not Raph Simmons for Prada, but just Raph Simmons. Now, Raph Simmons is really what took Prada to the next level in recent seasons, okay? Prada has always been a very big and popular design house, but like so many fashion houses, they go through waves of popularity and especially amongst like the fashion crowd and the young fashion crowd, right? There's always the mature fashion crowd that's like, you know, they've got their favorites and they love Prada every season and that's their favorite fashion brand. But when we're talking about, mm, I don't wanna say mainstream, but I just wanna say like putting the brand back on the map within the younger crowd and it kind of ends up going kind of into mainstream, Raph Simmons has done that. So I wanna talk about Raph Simmons as an independent designer because, you know, not the same at all as Prada, but just like very edgy, cool. Um, definitely a crossover between high fashion and streetwear fashion. And by the way, streetwear has become a big leader and forefront on the fashion scene. So like high fashion and streetwear can very much go hand in hand, and that's exactly what Raph Simmons is doing. A lot of cool and oversized pieces, a lot of very cutting edge, straight off the runway, nothing too, too mainstream. So look, a lot of people aren't going to love everything from Raph Simmons, it's definitely not for everyone. It's not like universal, and I don't love everything that I have seen, but there are some really cool pieces, and I wanted to put it on this list because I know that a lot of my viewers are very different. Not everyone loves like a floral, like Zimmerman vibe. A lot of you are like me, very eclectic. You like a lot of different pieces and some people just have more of like an edgy vibe to them. Kind of like a, like a Rick Owens kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Like the thing about fashion is that it's just like, it's so across the board, man. Like there's a lot of things that are popular in fashion all at the same time. And they're like polar opposites of each other yet. They're still popular. There's like a crowd for everything. And I know a lot of you guys are really diverse out there. And I know I have a fashion audience that relates more to like a Rick Owens than like a Pat Bow or Zimmerman or Joanna Ortiz, right? So I, I really wanted to include Raph Simmons, not my favorite across the board, but definitely some really, really cool pieces that I wanted to highlight and talk about with you guys today. Number five is a designer that is like kind of new on the scene, I think, um, Natasha Zinko. A lot of her designs are very, very like out there. Some are cool and some are like just, um, you know, maybe not so much for me, but 
generally a very cool up and coming designer. Very edgy and different, yet still like making some cool key fashion pieces for the season. A lot of oversized, a little bit of patchwork, some fringe, a lot of like what's trending right now, you know, but like a different approach, right? Like almost like an eccentric approach, which I really like sometimes when it comes to fashion because I feel like, you know, with some of these trends, you can find them anywhere, really. Like you can find fringe anywhere, a fringe jacket, a fringe dress. Like I love when it's done in a little bit of like an eccentric way when it comes to like popular trends. And that's exactly what she's doing. I, I think Natasha Zinko is a Russian designer if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong if I'm wrong. You know, let me know in the comments. Definitely gaining popularity within the fashion scene. I don't know if this is a brand that would ever become very, very mainstream, but definitely like amongst the fashion crowd, there are people that are really getting into this brand, you know, with celebrities wearing it, kind of like gives them a bit more exposure. And kind of like what I said about Raph Simmons, this is like one of those brands that you know, there are some like really, really cool pieces that I, I really like. And then there's some pieces that just are a little too much for me, but that's like how it is with almost every single fashion designer, right? Except for some of the designers that I just like love all the time, season after season. And then the collection is just so good from beginning to end. You know, there's some of those designers that I just absolutely love, kind of like Pat Bow. You know, not everything from the collection is for me, but there's so, so, so much of it that I love. With Natasha Zinko, there's a lot that I think is just so cool that I would definitely wear, and some that are just like a little too out there. You know, I don't have to be making a crazy statement every time I leave the house. I think like some of these fashion designers, that's their vibe, that's their brand, where it's all about like being different and out there. and. You know, some people just love that just to make a statement, just to be like, I'm different. I'm not like you or you or you or anything like anybody, you know? And a lot of people like that and that's their whole fashion vibe, just like being completely different. That's why when a lot of these pieces become popular and become trendy, they lose that fashion crowd, like some of the fashion crowd. A lot of the fashion crowd also rocks like the latest trends, but I'm talking about like just like the avant-garde underground fashion lovers. When things kind of get popular, they're like, nope, over it, need the newest, craziest thing that nobody else has. So I think uh, Natasha Zinko has a lot of those kind of pieces within her collections. Um, but definitely some really cool ones that were worth mentioning and that's why I wanted to put her on this list today. I have several other designers that I'd like to talk about. So I think I will definitely do another video like this because there's just like a few more on my list that I want to talk about, but I don't want to make this a crazy long video. So we will do another version of it if you want. I mean, if you like this, let me know in the comments. I'll definitely do another one. I love doing videos like this for you. I love doing any videos for you. I love you guys and I really hope you enjoyed. I love being here with you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel, which one's your favorite which one's your least favorite, and feel free to let me know any topics you'd like me to film. Some of you guys have left me some good ideas which are on my list of things I wanna do in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any other new ideas that you'd like me to cover, let me know. I have so many good ones coming out for you. Always wanna add new ones to the list. You guys know I'll be back in a couple days with another really great video and I cannot wait to see you. So until next time, bye for now.